So, um, so assessing a bid's best done in a team. More often than not, you'll have some sort of team to put together to assess bids. So, um, the best thing is to get a good diversity of different people who are, have some kind of understanding of what needs to be purchased. So, bidding is a team process. You can be behind a locked door, uh, the bids come in, you sign, can sign confidentiality agreements to say, I'm not going to talk about this because the last thing you want is to show any sort of indication that you've got some sort of favouritism. I've even worked on some um, bits where we actually had a property auditor in there as well to make sure that we weren't doing anything that could be considered slightly untoward and you had to check things with that property auditor. Um, so the actual act of bidding, uh, sorry, the act of assessing bid, I beg your pardon, tends to be, right, let's go through the bids one line by line and then assess them against each other and more that's done on some sort of schedule, some sort of comparison, some sort of decision where you say, and you score them, you score them based on in this area, how did they go commercially, how did they go on price, how did they go on the technical aspect and how did they go in alternatives or is there anything else in there. Bear in mind what you're trying to do and more often than not companies who are buying will have policies that says we want to buy the lowest conforming tender. So the act of of analysing tenders is A, going through to make sure whether the bid's conforming and whether they may have made some mistakes um, and therefore that could discount them. It could be such a bad mistake that you're saying, well, we can't possibly buy that because what they're offering is not going to be what we want. And so you then have some sort of agreement beforehand that says, well, based on this price they're offering, how can we temper that with their rating of how we'll good their software offer of their products and services is. So it is an important aspect to have agreed beforehand how we are going to assess before you open the first tender. So in that team environment, and again it's important in that team you have a variety of stakeholders from different parts of the business, some are from a contractual background, some are from technical, some are from operations, some are from the project manager who's going to manage this whole thing. And then you rate each tender based on how they went against different aspects of the original tender you wrote. And in that way, the assessment process is largely, a large part of it is done when you've written the tender because you've put together in the tender the, the structure that you want to get the answers in that's going to make it easier for, if you can, easier for you, the analyzer, to compare the different bits. So it's a lot of pre-work and a lot of uh, sitting together with a team and reviewing documents and reading through and scoring based on um, predefined parameters. When you're actually assessing the bids, I mean site, site visits are things that largely you should have done them before you've written the tender in terms of understanding what you're going to need. So part of the planning for a job for example is you've got everything you need to know about the site or the place or whatever it is you actually are expecting some product from. And you'd have um, all details in the document that's just gone out there because you would have expected to have audited everything there on site or you would have, have spoken to the people who are going to use it, whatever the case may be. I have, though, in the past used site visit as part of the tendering process. So in other words, when um, uh, you've put the bids out and you've said this is what we want and during the period of responding, you asked the proponents, so people who are putting in the tender, um, to come for a site visit. And the reason you do that is because if you feel that you really do want them to understand, you want them to understand um, uh, what the conditions are on sites or the particular nuances or what you really, really need to build or the conditions underneath with that which they're going to um, do the work, uh, you invite them out to a site visit. And that's to make sure that everyone's there at the same time and everyone can hear the questions that might be asked and everyone signs off that they've been there to say, right, you've actually seen it. And that's quite an okay thing to do during that tendering. Um, and that, the reason you do that is to make sure that whether there's anything that you think that could be um, ambiguity in the uh, specification, that you make sure that people see and kick the tyres of what you're actually getting them to work on. Quite often that's done on brownfield sites. So for example, where I've done it where you had maybe a treatment plant or something that you're adding to and there's interfaces with existing stuff there. So you really want the tenders to understand the particular difficulties associated with working on that site. So you, um, it, it really is getting the proponents to see and understand the conditions. 
as I said before, it's all about making sure that there's less ambiguity in possible, as possible in the tender that you're putting out there. Um, that's where site visits are useful. Uh, that's where they can help, help educate the vendor to make sure that in the end you end up with the best outcome that you possibly can be with as fewer ambiguities as possible.